Hello everybody, welcome to the official live cast of the Crucial Round 3 Group J match between Spartacus and his Lizardmen up against Mad Jake and his Orcs. Mad Jake won the toss, chose to kick. Um, as they're setting up, I can show you the group here. Um, the important thing is Winteros has won the group. Well, he hasn't necessarily won the group, he's qualified. Um, the winner of this may win the group. If it's a draw, Mad Jake will qualify. So Mad Jake currently is holding all of the cards. Spartacus has to win to make it through. But Spartacus is the guy with the lizards, so is therefore favoured, of course, versus Orcs. But he's got a very strange build, only three block. Only three block Saurus, two guard, and a tackle which is wasted, so he's only got five skills in this game. And uh, only three of them are block. Pretty tough, he's gone for the two rerolls and a reserve build. Mad Jake does not have an Apo and does not have a Troll, but does have three rerolls, 13 players, and he's got four guard, a block, and a tackle. I would have definitely preferred to have a mighty blow than a tackle, but there you go. And um, I can give you some info about them. Mad Jake is German, qualified from the Season 5 official ladder. And Spartacus is French and qualified from the Season 5 official playoffs. So there you go, both of them coming from, you know, the probably the second hardest place to qualify from, right? It guarantees a certain amount of quality coming from the ladder and playoffs. Yes, maybe even two, depending on your count of things, exactly, or to try. Yes, in January there was the Season 2 Finals. That was the forerunner to this competition. Not quite the same, so... You know. <laughs> Germany and France. No, the ladder. The ladder, you know, the ladder... People have said a lot of stuff about the ladder, but the thing is, at least it's a lot of games. You know? You can't really be bad on top of ladder. Whereas, qualifying from a private league, six games or something, it's a lot more variable on who qualifies. Boy howdy do I hate only three block wizards. I qualified from, um, well you see, this is why I said this was the second hardest place to qualify from, because I actually qualified from the hardest league to qualify from, which was the Super League, consisting of all of the best players from tabletop and online, concentrated into one unbelievably difficult to win competition. So there you go. Yeah. Not even exaggerating, really. I think, <laughs> funnily enough, I think that the favourites from the competition were all in Super League. Oh, I want it. Fun, funny you should ask, Keith. Yeah. Funny you should ask. Funny you should ask. <laughs> I organise it and I won it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, thank, thanks, Keith. It was pretty great, yeah. <laughs> it is weird how that happened, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, I also qualified from the uh, the NAF tournament, right? The NAF World Cup qualifying tournament. I'm a double qualifier. Dave was probably qualified from about seven leagues. He entered, <laughs> he entered about ten leagues and probably qualified from half of them. <laughs> But yeah, I did. I did qualify from a uh, another one as well. But I mean, you know, we had what well, we had three winners, didn't we? Which was myself, Seabros, and Dave. We all us three all won the Super League. Like the only one that was for the ticket was the one that I won, and then I just didn't bother trying the others. You see, so I had my excuse already. Um, 
But then, you know, like Seabros ended up qualifying uh, through the NAF Cup and Devo through the NAF Cup as well. So there you go. Yeah, he went a bit. He went a bit extreme, didn't he? I, I, he, he did the same for the one of the world, the World Cup in Blood Bowl too, right? But um, I started like that and then realised this is crazy. I'm, you know, I'm, I'll just enter two, and if I qualify, I qualify. And then I qualified from the old, like I only entered two, and I qualified from them both, which is funnily enough the same as it worked out for this one. I only entered Super League and the uh, NAF. Uh, NAF qualifier and qualified from both of those as well. So what can I say? I'm pretty brilliant when it comes down to it. <laughs> you may not like it, but this is what peak Blood Bowl performance looks like. So yeah, you know, just base, just blocked and base. That's all that's happened. It was a pretty rubbish LOS, wasn't it, for the lizards? Um, didn't hurt anything. I believe it does, Keith. Yes, I believe it does. So now is a good time to smash it, seeing as all the good players will be in the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you know, if anybody's if anybody's thinking about it, if anybody's thinking about it, now's the time. It makes sense that it will. I mean, I, I don't know if it's confirmed or not, but it kind of makes sense that it will. I don't know if they've said that it will. Or may, may, like maybe it won't. Like I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything, but I would imagine it would. But I don't know if they've said it is. I don't know if they've confirmed it. Or if I just think it should. It's the pal. Pal. Into an AV break. It. So um, it's tough, isn't it? Because he hasn't got any bang out potential, has he, Mad Jake? He's just got to like hope that he gets a random chip. Like he can't, he can't target things with mighty blow at all. So he's just gonna have to like random blocks to hurt something. Can't really hope to stop Spartacus here on defense. Realistically, right? He's got lizards, so he can try and stand in the way a little bit, but really really tough uh, thing is I guess he's just gonna hope that he can draw 1-1 one, one, right and then if he draws he qualifies whereas Spartacus I think even with this build is still gonna be favoured maybe not favoured to win though right maybe not favoured to win that's the thing right favoured overall like maybe 35 40, 25, something like that. But, um, you know, still probably more likely to draw or lose than he is to win. Okay, here we go. The guards are coming in. No, not too much. I thought he was going to put loads of guards in, he's just putting that in so he can hit the guy in the end, I guess. But then if he doesn't pal, I mean, if he doesn't push, if he won in nines, this is terrible, he's got to reroll a one in nine. Okay, he gets it. Oh, random removal! And without being on turn two, with not much more removal potential. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Not surprised by the apple there. It's early from a removal light team. Use the apple. Make sure you get your drive done.
Wow. I thought I would have put in the lineman, wouldn't you? I mean, I know he hasn't got a block, but flip me. Flip me, guys. Woo! Well, you could also lose this by uh, taking Sora's Kaz, but it's not very likely, is it, with him not having 90 blow? And a loss doesn't matter too much for Spartacus, right? A draw is just as disastrous as a loss for him. He has to win this game. But, I mean, I think he's going to do that just by scoring in turn 8, right? He's not going to score early in turn over again, which means everything is going to be on his defence for the game. Super interesting. Crazy surf chance. Yes. Yeah, that's a lot of dodges. That's a lot of skink dodges. I don't think he'd uh, consider it. Or he could do it the other way. I could do it the other way as well, yeah, actually. He probably, he probably could have come around here, couldn't he? Blitz from there, push him to there, then block him to there. No, no, then it's not an extra one. Errata, no, it was it was Skink Dodge Fills. Yes, Odon, yeah, it's not what I would have done. Mad, if I was Mad Jake and I'd won the toss, I'd have definitely just received, got my drive done, and then if Mad, for Spartacus to go for the win, he's got to score early. And then he'll probably, you know, then he'll probably lose 2-1. And it's just like, it's weird, isn't it? It's, it's really weird. I would expect the, the one who had to win to go for the kick, not the one who only had to draw. So rather surprising. Gets a random removal there. Blitz has gone. KO'd, no apple. For Mad Jake. Hello, Barney the Lurker. So whoever wins qualifies. If it's a draw, though, Mad Jake will qualify. Very early stream, yeah. It's going to be an 11 hour stream. <laughs> I'm already shattered, I've had five hours sleep. So this is going to go great. <laughs> Woo! I've got loads of tea, though, so that's good. Mm hmm. Yeah, they're both on three points. And uh, Wenteros is on six. So Wenteros is definitely qualified. Um, likely to win the group. Um, and yeah, somebody. I don't have mods installed. What I do have is the brightness turned up and lots of the settings turned down. <laughs> Funnily enough, I turned the settings down to make it look better. <laughs> there is sadly no knob off today. The knob off was yesterday. It was a great it was a great knob off yesterday as well. Yeah, because I think the, the, what's wrong with the game normally is that the background is kind of like hyper realized right so it, the background looks like the foreground as well as the foreground looking like the foreground right so it just all melts into each other whereas now by turning the graphics down it makes it look a bit blurrier and not so good and which makes the uh you know actually makes the background because the background looks worse objectively worse it makes it look more like a background which makes it look a bit better <laughs> We did it. We did it. Was the ribbon? It was the ribbon ogre this time. One or done. The ribbon ogre beat the uh, beat the spiky ogre. Yes, thanks, Magit. Yep, I'll uh, I'll definitely. There's there's going to be an extended break in between one of the games, so I I won't be able to forget to eat today. <laughs> Thank. Thankfully, this is a bit tricky, isn't it? He slammed in another bit of a half man's. But this, I mean, this is the point where having the guards in for the lizards does help them do things, doesn't it? I mean, having good dice helps as well. 
Let's be honest. Oh, it's a block player. Oh, this rookie, I, you know, essentially a rookie, right? Because he's got tackle and there's no dodge. Painful, painful to have lost him. I really don't like the tackle. I hate it so much, in fact. If you just a block, you'd be way better. <laughs> I wish Cosmigo. Oh, there we go. So, yeah, he only blocked with the block players. One in nine twice, but that was okay. The problem is this guard stands up and then he just gets to hit the guarders. With the croc to get the other guy. This seems on the verge of there being a surf, doesn't there? But um it's gotta favour the strength four team, you'd think. Again, I wish that was true of us. That uh, stun's actually massive, right? Otherwise, he'd be straight back in. And uh, everything would be good there. Yes, that's true, but um, also blocks basically as good, isn't it, is the thing. You know, most uh, most elves are unprotected, so you're better off hitting an unprotected elf with block than you are a blodger with tackle, right? Still, I think he's uh, he's definitely played well with this uh, this roster that I hated. <laughs> Goes for the one. -er. Just one D to the Crocs. I thought it would have two D'd this one. And then uh, followed. And then this guy could have come in there and then he could have two D'd it, right? That's what I'd have done. But instead he went for a one D. Did stun the Crocs, so it was a great decision. Mad Jake always used to play Pro Elves, didn't he, on uh, Blood Bowl 2? I'm not imagining that, am I? Yeah, honestly, the, this, this Lizardman team hasn't been as bad as I thought it would be. And I think, you know, I think Spartacus has played it well as well oh no oh no they've rescheduled the next game they had it at half two now they rescheduled it for half three so that's they're on the cat amongst the pigeons
Okay, we've come for the side switch. Interesting. A bit of a bonus time burner. Feel like he can't follow this, can he? Mm. And pushes him away. Oh, huge, huge AV break. Not that huge. Errata, he's got a guard here. It was nearly huge though, right? Because he could have just stood up and 2D'd him, but it, no, you can just stand this guy up and 2D him. But um, still, still good. Still a good removal. Down two now is pretty bad for Mad Jake's chances of stopping him. Nothing for Spartacus. I think he maybe made a mistake with moving this guy up here, right? He could have moved into there and 2 d him. He, as I say, he already had the two assists. This lineman could have been here. And that one didn't even have followed. No, then he's got this guy. But then he could have come over, right? It's interesting. It's certainly very super interesting. As Kaelon the Turd would say. I mean, 2D a skink. Or he can, like, tag this guy and then, like, double rush a 2D the Solar. So he's probably going to lift the skink. Does rush. Probably should have hit the skin first, right? Go here looks like it sucks, but the problem is, if you don't do it, he's just going to punch you anyway, right? Like, like if he didn't, if you don't make that one D, he just stands up the Saurus, blocks him, and then this guy's free anyway. So yeah, he was in a bit of a pickle, thinking he had to do that one D, as much as it looked bad and was unlucky. Uh, 
Well, he didn't directly fall to interesting, isn't he? I would have thought he'd have come around. Giving two two squares over. Or you know, giving back as well, but at least two over. Lovely cup of tea. Blitzing without block. A blockless block. He's, I mean, it's all he can do, right? He hasn't got block on it. So, ah, it's because he had a plan. And that plan was a kid here. That's why that guy was there and not too across. Yes, he was really um, reliant on the power, wasn't he? But he got it without block. No problem. Funny it going from elves to orcs. I mean, I, I guess most people are playing orcs in this rule set, but interesting for like you know to have had the history of elves. I know he's been playing orcs on the ladder, but I would have thought he'd have gone back to elves for resurrection format. Low TV res style. Gets a removal. Powered it up with taking so long to think where he was going to push him and whether to follow. <laughs> Rushing, last reroll goes in. Couldn't you have moved this guy to here? Or maybe. Should have moved this first. Yeah, I did think that when he was making when he was rolling dice up here. I thought, shouldn't this guy be stood here already? Yep. And that frees up the guard, biggin. So he's done some things. As mad J. Spartacus is obviously going to try to get this skink out over here. But it's pretty easy, isn't it? It's pretty easy to do. I guess it's a little bit of a pickle in terms of the blitzer. Like maybe you've got to blitz him up and then punch him again if you don't get him the first time. So this is the best way of doing it because it's a block with block and then it doesn't matter that this guy's blockless because you can't accept the board down anyway. Okay, no, he's not blitzing him. Okay, interesting, interesting. Not what I would have done. See, I don't like this one because it's adding another blockless block and then, yes, you're blitzing with block, but that doesn't really matter, right? Because you can't accept the board down anyway. So... For a second, I liked that he was going to blitz with the buckler sky, but 
Is it be break? Oh my god, the tackle is cast. Nice tackle, mate. Where'd you get it? Oh, lord. Disaster. Absolute disaster for Mad Jake. I just run through mate if he gets this pal. Which he does. He's like running the corner. Sideline. So you can stand there. And then you can even just dodge out the skin. And another one. No, he can't dodge out the skink. So the blitzer can base the ball. And that's that's it really. What an absolute banging. No might I mean well there's the only one mighty blows on the crocs who's barely blocked. And he's taken one cars and three KO'd AV ten plus players. Absolutely brutal. It's KO to Skink. Losing the tackle is horrible. I mean, this could definitely be a win for Spartacus. This could be Mad Jake going out. Maybe he's regretting kicking right now. I can't believe he kicked. I, this isn't the power of hindsight. I can't believe he kicked when he just needed the draw, right? Like, kicking to know what to do on your offense is fine, but it's really weird. I guess it's because he didn't want Spartacus to know what it, Spartacus had to do in his offense. But then... It's still pretty weird, isn't it? How we just receive, get my touchdown done. And then now I've got the draw. Obviously not that easy versus Lizards. Lizards are a nightmare matchup for Orcs. <laughs> Gotta dodge it big enough for Crocs. Does it? It barely helps him, that's the worst thing. Like, how can it help him? Even if he, like, makes another 6 plus dodge to there, he just blitzes with this one. So, like, there's nothing it can really do. <laughs> you can even 3 dice blitz this. I can even 3D blitz this. He hadn't got the pow. If he would have just taken the push and then blocked with a skink <laughs> to get the touchdown, or if he would have re-rolled it, like you know, if he'd rolled like three pushes, I wonder if he'd if he would have re-rolled the three D. Wow, this is bad. Very bad. Needs to really get at least one of these back. Because he's got 13 players. Yeah, so he's still got 10. But he needs at least one of these back, but he's still down a blitzer. And down a touchdown. But he just needs the draw.
be funny if this lizard, if these lizards uh, <laughs> end up, <laughs> I have to play these. <laughs> and then the tackle's just incredible and the guards are great and I lose because his build count is me. That would be funny, wouldn't it? Hilarious. Not continue. Oh, speaking of orcs, we've got orc cheerleaders and basic cheerleaders. Sad, basic coach. Sad. His varag's probably the basic as well. Basic. Uh, Unmodified sideline staff. Very sad. Very sad stuff from Spartacus and Mad Jake. Didn't prettify their teams enough. You know, at least they customised them a bit, right? They've got the colour schemes. They've done their own colour schemes. I don't mind the green lizards. I kind of hate that the lizards have to have. Uh, you know, blue on them. That would be. I think it'd be great if you could like color, color the skin of the lizards. I kind of hate that you can only color the scales and not the skin. No, that was uh, that was Gabias who had them. <laughs> you only had five in the first half, <laughs> and then one in the second half. <laughs> <laughs> And then Gavias ended up ended up qualifying still despite that because of uh, because of the other game. Yeah, only five dub skulls, <laughs> and his opponent got two. So there was seven dub skulls in the first half. But that seems unfair to Gavias to say there were seven when five of them were his. Obviously, no one turn here. Move with six, not even worth trying. It's maybe worth throwing in a foul. The bad thing is, of course, it can mean that you've got nine for the second half, and it can also mean that they. I mean, he'll definitely have eleven. It just he's just trying to downgrade a Saurus to a Skink. So it's obviously not a good idea to foul, but there is an argument for how lucky do you need to get to win from here and well to score and he doesn't have to win he just has to score and the answer is he's got to get pretty lucky <laughs> he does have to get pretty lucky so there's definitely an argument for doing the wrong thing if you like he <laughs> dies three times Three dice in a lizard. God, that feels good, doesn't it? So yeah, he does make the foul. So I think that's like objectively a bad foul, right? But, the situation being as it is, I think that's what he had to do to try and get lucky. Hello, Dimmy Gee. You're Sportacus. Sportacus was great, wasn't he? Why didn't it skink? I think it was right to um, try to maximise the LOS. Foul. Like, hurting a skink doesn't do anything, right? Because he's got the reserve. But removing a Saurus. Very good. I 
I mean, I mean, a slight downgrade, right, if you had to feel this instead of this, but I mean, they're essentially the same player. got one of his curls back so he has 11 players so he's just down oh yeah yeah, yeah. so he's just down the tackle blitzer which isn't too horrendous but of course if he'd received he would have had that tackle blitzer for this drive It's unfortunately not really good though, is the thing. Even with faster movement, it's still just... It's got to get in the right place and not get powered and then, and then want to dodge away from it. Like, just so many things have got to line up. It's, it's more like that it just randomly does something like, you know, when he follows up a block and he doesn't think about it and it just gets to move somewhere. Might do that. But it's, uh... Mostly it's just like a move busted skink for no reason. <laughs> like, the other skinks are just better, right? That's the problem. He's a movement 8 and he's move 7, so... It's not really worth giving up a movement for him can be on offense for the extra chance to catch the kickoff. Oh! Oh! Flip me! Well, that is massive. The Crocs goes down to a 1 in 36 block result of AV 10 plus break and then 10 plus counts. Unbelievable, Jim. Dying tackle does, yeah, just the same it always was. It's, uh, can't really take it in that style, but it's okay on L's, isn't it? Can be okay on L's. That's a huge Kaz. I wonder if you would have fouled the Saurus if he hadn't made that Kaz. But I think after making that Kaz, now you're not feeling like you have to get quite as lucky. You can just try and play normally for a bit. Mega Kaz. Spartak is still thinking. He's in guard. Like, it is nice having guard players, but... Man. Giving up block is... Really hard to do. Blockless. And he eats it. Wonder how aggressive he'll be here. Uh, 
don't know what I'd do. The, so the removal, like the Kaz stayed out, but the the Kales came back just to line it out. So, and he had like he still got eleven. So, nearly well, his full strength has made mad. Jake is gonna get make Jad. <laughs> Had some bit of a rubbish turns there, didn't they? Double downs without block. He could, of course, be blitzing with block before blocking without block, but the thing is, it's like you can still want to do something and then like blitz somewhere else or whatever, don't you? So you don't always want to just be going the safest thing as possible. Crux is huge. Magic still probably favoured, right, to get the draw here, so. Spartacus has got to try and make something happen. Gonna punch it with a skin. Yeah, he can, can't he? With getting a pal. Two, three, four, five. So you can even block it before standing up the Saurus. If he wants. I can't really tell who's on which team there, but I mean, that guy's absolutely surrounded. But very nice. Nice to chain to get the extra hit on it. Three forty three. It's a little bit excessive, isn't it? Four minutes in, you know, the first half and a couple of turns, but you should have enough for the uh, whole match.
for a dodge, fails, stunned. So that's pretty brutal, isn't it? Three stunned guys. Though two of them have become unstunned, but still, that was... It's still pretty brutal for blunting his offensive drive. And if Spartacus can do that and win this 1-0, he will qualify for the knockout stage. I can show you the groups here because absolutely nothing's happening, as you can see. Uh, Wendross has scored two touchdowns, Magic scored two, and Spartacus has scored two. So at the moment, as it stands, Spartacus has become top of the... Spartacus is currently top of the division. If, if this game ends 1-0, Spartacus will be top of the division. And then if Wenteros loses and doesn't score any touchdowns versus Court Guy, then Spartacus can win the group. Like, you know, at the moment there's still three people that can possibly win the group. Though, looks like Mad Jake realistically can't, right? He's just trying to draw this. The way the first half has gone. Mad Jake is just trying to get the draw here. Squeak the draw and get second place. But if Spartacus wins, then there's a chance he wins the whole group. Ooh, double skulls with block. Rerolls it for a push. And then chains for the extra hit. Very nice. Obviously, hoping to power so we could reposition that source, but that's why he didn't do the safe move first. Sticking all three skinks on that uh, one big one. Well, this is really hard for Mad Jake to get anywhere, isn't it? Looks like he's gonna desperation push the flank, turn four panic. Oh wow, gotta reroll that. The ball is uh, gapingly exposed. And he gets the pow, so great reroll. This guy in front. This guy in there. And move over a bit. And actually, he's got four Sauras here. So this is actually pretty nice, isn't it? This is actually pretty nice for Mad Jake that the four Sauruses are all over here. Just fighting skinks. It's not so bad. Lovely cheeky 1D because he hasn't got block. Not sure it was worth the dodge. I mean, I'm only not sure, because you know what I mean, like, he's got to block you with a block guy, really, if you don't do that dodge. I guess he would have tagged out the guard, so, like, you can argue that's better, because the guard guy can, like, go out in front now, but then letting an extra guy come back around could be more impactful a couple of turns later. Hard to say.
So it gets a couple of a couple of saurus deep. Never a bad idea. Surely gonna blitz with this block on the floor, right? Yeah. Bases the ball. I don't hate it now against orcs with four turns left. Really don't wanna dodge the throw it, did it? This is why I didn't like putting all three of the skinks on that. Bigger and it's like it's not like he could just reliably deal with it, so but he dodged two of them off, so it was alright. Yeah, god, this looks horrible for magic. I mean, this is why I wouldn't have taken orcs to this tournament, right? It was just how horrendous the lizard man matchup looks. And feels and is. <laughs> so another turn of a large amount of thinking. <laughs> Is good in lizards. Wood elves are good. And then rats and dark elves can be. And necro can be. But there those three are all still a bit dicey. Dark elves, rats and necro are all a bit dicey. Whereas Wood Elves are good. But even then, even Wood Elves, which are the good one, if the if the lizards play well, they're still not even that bad versus the woodies then really. But Wood Elves are the like the absolute typical um, lizard man counter. You know, lizards very good in this format, so not like lizards, wood elves. I mean lizards as well, so it was kind of natural to go, like, probably in every format, honestly, it's likely that Wood Elves are really good. And if they're not really good, then Lizards will be the best, right? Like, it's probably just one of those two is usually going to be the best for any format. Because if Wood Elves are the best, then you should expect to see the best players using them, which makes Wood El Lizards a bad choice. And then, if Wood Elves don't have a good rules pack, then Lizards probably do. And the biggest counter's gone, so or maybe only counter, and only and a non-solid counter at that. Really, I, th I think it's really not that good for the Wood Elves if the Lizards play well. Ah, well, with Amazon's a bit different, isn't it? But um, yeah, tabletop's a bit out of different because you've got Amazons and vampires as well, haven't you? You've got two more. You've got two more teams in tabletop. But online here, I feel like they're the they're, they're still like they're they're the format defining ones on here at least, right? But yeah, a bit different when you've got. Obviously, when you had Underworld, it was just Underworld. An Underworld existing made Lizardmen a bit rubbish. But now Underworld are no more.
Yeah, Amazon are, are probably the highest win rate on tabletop, I would think. Very strong. Two strength falls with defensive is pretty insane. <laughs> I'd be honestly shocked if Zonda didn't have the highest win rate overall. Kit. Makes sense, doesn't it? They're a beast of a team. Yeah. Bit unfair to compare anything to Underworld Prina. Oh, may the one in nine dodge. He was going to try and dodge both, right? So he could punch this guy. He's going to try to dodge both and then punch him. That maybe leaves the diagonal switch on. The problem, I guess, hand off to this blitzer. Right. And then go. <laughs> well, Nerd King Danny, people. Not everyone, <laughs> because I know I didn't, because I said they have strength four dodges, like, that's insane. One skill and they've got strength four blodges, they get like two Carlevon kills, like, that's insanity good. So I definitely didn't say they were they were bad, um, but maybe some people did, yeah. I mean, people being wrong about Blood Bowl is nothing new. <laughs> yeah, he goes for the handoff. This is really all he had, right? This handoff play. And it was kind of opened up a little bit more by that skink dodge fail. Maybe he should have just, you know, left it in. Maybe he could have moved this skink. To like here, right? Something like that. Rerolls so he gets the power and gets the power. Like, lo losing four block was obviously bad at the start, but gaining two plus strength is insane. And defensive is uh, obviously not great at 1,000 TV, but it gets a bit of value at NAF, lad, at NAF value. NAF level TV. The defensive does something. This is fair using a bunch of time, isn't it? You just gotta think about this. <laughs> no magic art, <carpet>. no. <laughs> no. Lots of people are bad at Blood Bowl. That's fine, isn't it? Like, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's, it's true.
probably just Amazon, yeah. Probably just Amazon, honestly. <laughs> probably just Amazon. And I guess, like, there being no Amazons makes dwarves even worse, but then dwarves don't even count on Amazon because the Amazons have two strength four with defensive, so... Crazy, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's the play, isn't it? 5 plus 2d, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... I wonder if Mad Jake should have dodged it. Because obviously one in nine you get you he gets there. But if you don't do it then fifty five percent he gets there. So you know. You probably have to make this dodge, right? One, two, three, four, five. You probably just have to make that dodge and go there yourself. Sucks, but He could also go for like the skink sack, except he's he's only got two left now. Oh, he blitzed him with this one. So he's going for like skink tags or location or something. Could have like made a dodge and a rush there, right? So he was at least tagging it if it um if this didn't work and then he could go around and tag this. So that was maybe the play. So everything's tagged. Even if you fail the five plus, but I think the five plus sack was probably the play. Yeah, trying to force him for the two turn, yeah. But I think he had no choice anyway. The thing is, I just don't think he had a choice anyway, right? <laughs> so... And now if you re-roll this, you haven't got a re-roll for your two turn. So you probably have to let it go. He doesn't let it go. Well, that is... He's just gonna have to dodge to score, doesn't it? And then tries the Saurus, yeah, that's good. So what, I guess the guard just goes in 2D him. And then you blitz. And then dodge, and then score. There might be a clever play that's better than that, but that's the obvious one. And obviously Magic's seen that instantly and now he's just going to spend about a minute seeing if he can find something clever. But I don't think there's much chance of finding something clever. Not that he's not clever, I just don't think it exists. <laughs> that's the problem, isn't it? Oh, Ajax. I mean, I, I was always going to go in next turn if I was Manji. Sucks that you're giving him a two turn, but like, there's no realistic way to stall this out. I never thought there was a chance to stall this out, really, so I would have. I wouldn't have uh, put in the last re roll. Honestly, after you've got the skink there, maybe I wouldn't have even put the skink here either. Can't we stall one more turn? Yeah, I don't know, you can get this blitzer up, you can get this guy up, you can get this blitzer up, you can get a lineman up, you can keep the ball more or less where it is. Like maybe. Ball can come back to here. I mean, that must be what he's doing. Here. I don't really like 
Yeah, I would have like put the guard in, make this block, see if it's a pow. Make this blitz, see if it's a pow, right? And then and then if you do, do both of those pows, then you've just got the eight out of nine score. And if it's not a pow, then you could change direction and come back into a cage somehow, right? Because he does have players that can do things. He's got this guy up there who can base him. Gets this guy up here. So this isn't bad, is it? Maybe he can stall it. But I think I would have just gone in for it. Maybe I'd have been wrong. I mean, this is pretty good, isn't it? This is a pretty good, pretty good little turn. You could bracket the Saurus. Is that better? Or is it better to rush to here? Or is it better just to stand there? I feel like the bracket's the best. It goes for the rush? No, yeah, it does. Oh, the other side. Oh, interesting. Interesting? I mean, now this is just a, a 2D to... No, no, it's not a 2D to the ball, but nearly a 2D to the ball. Yeah, it is. Yeah, this guy can go there. And then it's a 2D, and then he dodges to smash him. Like, I know it's a Saurus dodge, but and he hasn't, he's, he's burnt his last reroll, didn't he, last turn? Yeah, the thing about the bracket is it stops it stops the 5 plus hit on the ball, doesn't it? You can block him down and then get an assist with a skink and then. I guess this stops him hitting in here easier with the skink. I guess that's what he was thinking about the like a skink assist and then a, a knock down here and then a skink assist and then a uh, skink one D is what he was guarding against. Oh, and he can just punch him. Oh. Ooh. Will this be too conservative? We'll find out very soon. Done from that failed dodge actually has turned out to be massive, hasn't it? And this Saurus. We've got all these three players here that can do something. Jake's got a reroll, so this looks very possible to do things. Yeah, but, but if you go to the sideline, then then you've got less 
freedom, right? You can like do a handoff to this guy, for example, and then just go one, two, three, four, five, six, rush. Like that's a super easy touchdown right now, isn't it? Just blitz this guy for a push and then hand off. Like that's super easy. So <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I have no control. Okay, well, <laughs> that skink covered that, which I guess uh, Spartacus thought of. Is this a blitzer? So you could like blitz him, block him, and I just dodge out and score, like, it's still, it's still pretty simple, isn't it, all, all together. But, you know, there might be something clever, that you might be able to find something clever. So this is just a 1D, because these, he might have been thinking, yeah, this is just a 1D, he's just going to go straight forward. Ooh. I don't think this was as good as as going this way, but needing powers, and maybe it is. But it's more chance of, like, using your reroll on the hits. I kind of like my way more. Because I would have had a 3D on the skink, maybe. Here we go, 3 plus he makes the dodge. And that is it. It is 1-1. One, one. Flip me. Flip me. Well, that looks like Mad Jake has qualified. Unless... Um, Spartacus scores a one turn. And he does have a Chameleon Skin for the 3 plus PA and on the ball. And he's got some skinks. Did he get a good one turn? I think Spartacus might have scored a nice one turn in this competition already. I think it was Spartacus. So. Tanks Keat. It's hard, right? Even though I've done all of the games, which is like a lot. 79. This is the 80th game. This is the 80th game. <laughs> I can't remember, like, any of them. <laughs> I just literally can't remember any of the games, pretty much. But, yeah, I had a vague recollection of a... of a, uh... of a one turn. I think his opponent... didn't do the best defense against it, but um, I think it was also still an impressive one turn. So, he's got the chance to do the same again, hasn't he? And maybe the guards help for the one turn, right? Well, they, you know, they can do something somewhere. With. I think I see what he's doing. Do you shoot a play, guys? Do you shoot a play, guys? I don't know where. Well, I haven't spotted it. He's put them there. He's put them there. So I can see it. He's put them here. 
is why I ex what I'm thinking is this skink goes up, this skink goes in, and then this guy blitzes from here, pushes him into there, pushes him into there, pushes him up to there, and then he blocks him up to there, and then he blocks him up to here and chains him out as well, and then he just goes through and there we go. Gets the underball. Is he out of range? Three, four, five, six, seven, rush, rush. Oh my god, he's got to pass it. Oh, changing weather kills him! Okay, well that's horrible. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't make you bad to not see it, does it? Um, there's... There's what Artemis would call bad, and there's what kind of objective people would call bad. Oh, wow. And not seeing this one turn I don't think makes you bad. Ooh, okay, he's done it a little bit differently. Oh, he just needed one! Okay, he just needed one. Well, I was an idiot, wasn't I? Oh no, but my way I could pow. I wasn't an idiot. My way I could pow. So my way was was slightly better at the cost of more. So so what you could do is You could have done it my way as well. You can still do it! Oh you can still do it! Of course he can! I'm a maroon, never mind. Wait, can he still do it? Yeah, he can still do it. And this one could have been a pow. He just means, oh my god, and then he can still do it. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Errata, errata. He gets a player in here as well, which is incredible. Which means he doesn't. He only needs to do one dodge. I mean, he could just block with this guy. He didn't need to block with this one. But... And in fact, he has to block with this, doesn't he? Oh, it's only a 1D, is it? But he can block him first for a 2D. Oh, he could have 2 d him first! Couldn't he? Oh, he, he pushed him wrong! He double dodged! He scored! <laughs> wow. Well, there you go. Spartacus with, with another one turn. Incredible, yeah. Absolutely incredible. Hello, Break ET. Um, wow. Yep, great stuff. Great stuff. Particularly when you think about it was at the end of a super stressful match that's taken, you know, an hour and a half. And uh, he had to win the game, right? And he, and he had no rerolls. Absolute end of his tether. And started it with the... the, the uh, it was a three plus pass, wasn't it? Or was it a four plus pass? And the five plus catch. He started with a five plus catch because he kind of had to. Incredible stuff. Um, yeah, so there you go. Wow. Absolutely incredible. So yeah, looking at the group there, that means Spartacus goes up to six points and four touchdowns scored. So now, if Wenteros loses to Coke Guy, you know, Dark Elves Undead, he could lose. Um, if if Wenteros loses and doesn't score two touchdowns, which he probably won't if he loses, then um, then Ma then Spartacus can win the group. You know, somewhat likely that Spartacus wins the group actually with four touchdowns. Well, it's not that likely, right? Because Wenteros just needs a draw, but. It's very, very possible that Spartacus, with that touchdown, went from out to topping the group. <laughs> so we'll have to see when when Ross plays court guy now, what happens there. But for now, well, whatever happens, when Ross and Spartacus are both qualified. They're both qualified. Mad Jake and court guy have been eliminated. So there you go. Congratulations, Spartacus. Commiserations, Mad Jake. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.